Hello, everybody, and welcome to another mystery box function challenge. In the purple mystery box, there is some math, and your challenge is to figure out what that math is. You can pause this video, click on the link in the description to get to this page, and put in as many numbers as you like. See how they come out transformed here at the bottom, and use that to figure out what's inside the mystery box. When you think you've got it, come on back, listen to the rest of the video, and see if we get the same thing. All right, let's get started on this one. Put in a zero. Okay, zero gives us zero. How about a one? All right, one gives us some decimal there, a long decimal. Two, very similar decimal. That, so this might be a really, really shallow downward facing uh, parabola, perhaps. Let's try a three. Okay, it's a beautiful little curve there we've got going on. How about a four? Eh, headed down. So just looking at the shape of this curve, I'm suspicious about whether it's a parabola or whether it might be a trig function. Let's go a little further out. Five. Ah, okay, do a six. Okay, so it looks like we're, we're going up and then down and then up again, so it looks like a periodic function. Um, and so I want to maybe put in, although we've got numbers close to this, I'm going to put in an approximation for pi, 3.1415. And that's almost zero. Okay, so that makes sense. That's good information. How about pi over 2? That's pretty close to 1.5. And that's really close, 0.498, really close to 0.5. Hmm. So this isn't exactly what I'm used to with uh, this trig function. L let's put in some negative numbers, make sure this is continuing on the other side of the graph. Yeah, it looks like it is. Yeah, same pattern. Okay, so what's going on here? First of all, let's think about the trig functions themselves and which one this might be. Remember, in a unit circle, we've got a radius of 1. And what the sine and the cosine are doing is they're, we're putting in an angle, which is measured in the distance around the outside. So he, right here, that would be an angle of 0. Right here, going up here, that would be an angle of pi over 2. Okay. So at when we put in 0, this function is at 0. And this point right here is the point 1, 0. The cosine is the x coordinate, and the sine is the y coordinate. So it looks like sine based on this. When we get to pi over 2, we are at basically 1 half. And you'd think we'd be at 1, but we're only at 1 half. And if I look down here, it looks like we're only getting to negative 1 half. That would be at 3 pi over 2. So it looks a lot like the sine function, but just kind of narrowed down to only go between one half and negative one half. So how would that happen with the sine function? This this height of the graph, it's it, the word for it is amplitude. You know, how tall the the crests get and how deep the troughs get, that's the amplitude. And that is affected by putting a multiplier on the outside of the function. So to get this shape here, I think all we have to do is multiply the sine of x times 1 half. Or maybe I'll write it like this, 1 half sine of x. So I think that's our answer. Uh, we could fool around with some more points, but I think we've got the crucial ones here, 0 and pi over 2 and pi. So I, I'm pretty confident that this is the right answer. Let's take a look. Yeah, we have 1 half times the sine of x. And we can go ahead and graph that as well. And there it is, beautiful, very gentle uh, wave here. If you multiplied that by one fourth, one fourth times the sine of x, you'd get an even shallower kind of set of waves. If you put a big number there, like three or four or ten, they'd get really high. Um, so that is one half times the sine of x. How did that go for you? Were you able to see that this was a trig function? Let me know. Thanks, everybody.